Hi everyone. I wanted to continue my video series showing you my favorite techniques for socks. In the last video, I showed you how to do the German twisted cast on in rib to get a nice cuff. I've knit through my leg. In this case, it's just stockinette in this sock. And now I'm going to show you how to knit the garter edge heel flap with a slip stitch pattern. This is a pattern that I first saw. I first saw the technique for the garter edge in the Hermione's Everyday Sock, and I combined it with the slip stitch pattern that I like for my heel flaps when I'm knitting a sock that has a heel flap and gusset. If you're new to sock knitting and you've not knit a heel flap and gusset before, I'll show you a little bit about the anatomy of the sock so you know what we're talking about. These are top down that I'm knitting today, so I've got the cuff at the top, then the leg of the sock. And then you can see here, if I lay the sock flat, and this one is unblocked, so it's not laying perfectly flat, but you'll get the idea. We have the back of the heel right here, and then we have the foot of the sock. So leg, foot, heel. The heel flap is this piece right here. It's really easy to see because I've used a contrasting yarn, so you'll see it in this pretty coral color. And there's two components to the heel flap or the heel of the sock in this case. We have the flap itself, which is this part, and I'll show you how to knit that first. And then we have to get our stitches going towards the foot of the sock, which is when we pick up. We're gonna do that at the end of the heel with what's called a heel turn. So I'm gonna show you today how to knit the heel flap and then how to turn the heel. And then I've already made a video to show you how to pick up the stitches on the heel flap and heel turn so that you can start knitting towards the foot of your sock. If I turn this the other way, you'll be able to see from the back side what we're doing. So you can see this is perfectly symmetrical. We're going to have a garter edge on each side, and then we're gonna have a knit one, slip one stitch pattern. It gives a really nice clean look to the sock. It gives a nice structure to the heel. And as I described in a couple of my other videos, I really like the edge that this garter border creates. So let's get into it. I'm going to set this sock off to the side and I've got my other sock that I've started. In this case, I've knit my two inches of ribbing. I've knit the stockinette leg of my sock. And at this point, I'm at the beginning of my round. So I've come all the way around and I'm ready to start my heel flap. I'm gonna be using a contrasting yarn. In this case, my ball looks a little bit uh, messy, but that's because the cat found it the other day and was throwing it across the living room. So in the case of a heel flap and gusset, we're only going to be using half the stitches on our sock. You'll be able to use this technique for any sock that you want. In my case, my sock is 72 stitches, and I'm only going to be using the 36 that are on my back needle. It doesn't actually matter which one's the front and the back in the case of a stocking nut sock. So if you get it wrong, not a problem at all. If you are knitting a pattern sock that has a different pattern, you'll wanna make sure that you are on the back of the sock when you get started. So I'm gonna get everything positioned to begin. Again, I'm doing this on magic loop and we're only gonna be working on the back 36 stitches. The pattern that I use is just two rows. It's really easy to remember. And I actually start, because I've come all the way around, I'm gonna start knitting on the wrong side. So this is the pattern for the wrong side row. It's going to be knit three to create that garter edge. And then we're gonna purl the rest of the way across. So let me just get this contrasting yarn started here and I'm going to knit my first three stitches and then purl all the way across the row. There's only two rows. There's one for the wrong side and one for the right side. We're gonna be repeating those the entire time we're knitting our heel flap. If you happen to be starting on the right side of your sock, wherever your needle is positioned, I could have just as easily gone around again and said I'm going to start on the right side. That's fine, just start with the right side row. And you'll know in just a second, one is primarily knit, one is primarily purl. 
the purl goes with the wrong side, the knit goes with the right side. So it's very interchangeable with all of your sock patterns. So is the heel flap and gusset technique. I purchase patterns all the time that may be written for an afterthought heel. They may be written for a German short row heel, a fish lips kiss heel, whatever the heel is. And I just always substitute a heel flap and gusset because I like the fit and shape of the sock. I like the look of it and I like to knit one. Okay, so in this case, I've knit my first three stitches and then purled all the way across on the wrong side. When I look at the right side over here on the left where I started, I'll see three purl bumps and then my knit stitches. So that is round one for me. Round two, I'm gonna start with the opposite. Because I'm on the right side, I'm gonna create three purl bumps. So purl three. And then we have a little bit uh, of pattern to remember here. So I'm gonna knit one, purl one, purl one, or I'm sorry, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one. And I'm gonna do that until I get to the last three stitches of the row, which will be easy to identify because I purled them. So they're gonna stand out. Let's see, that was a knit one, slip one. We're just gonna knit slip all the way across. So I'm slipping. Now I see these purl bumps. I'm just gonna knit those last three stitches. Because I'm using a contrasting yarn, this stitch is a little loose, it's not a problem, we'll fix it at the end. If you are not using a contrasting yarn and you're using your main color, your working yarn would have been in the right place to start. There's no need to do anything differently. This will work just fine, whether you're using a contrasting yarn or not. The technique also works with any weight of yarn. So if you're using a different stitch count, if you're using a different weight of yarn, you'll be able to apply this technique, just adjust your stitch counts accordingly. Okay, so I've completed two rows. I'll show you both rows back and forth one more time and we'll keep going. So I'm on the wrong side. I'm gonna start with my knit three. There's no slipping of the stitch on the end. You'll notice we're knitting and purling that first stitch, which gives us that nice edge. So I've knit three. And now I'll purl all the way across. I really do like the look of a slip stitch heel. I like the structure. You can easily turn this into the eye of partridge pattern, which has you alternating where your knit and slip stitches are each row. You just adjust, adjust it by one. So I think it's overall very versatile. And I'm just gonna purl all the way across. All right. And now I'm on the right side row, so I'm going to do the same thing I did a minute ago with my right side row. I'm going to purl, let's see, let's get some yarn. I'm gonna purl the first three stitches and then I'll go into my pattern. Purl, three. Now I'm going to knit one and then slip one. Knit one, slip one. And I'll repeat that until I get to the last three stitches and we knit those. This goes very quickly. It's easy to do. Again, you're only using half the stitches for your sock. This technique would work great if you were using 
double point needles. Several of you commented on the last video explaining how you may use magic loop or add in a DPN if you're knitting on nine inch circular needles and you want to use a heel flap and gusset technique, which is great. Okay, I'm at the end, my three pearl bumps, I'm going to knit those last three stitches. Oh, I split my yarn. Let me just fix that. Well, I split it again. There we go. Perfect. So what you'll see is the very beginning of our pattern forming. You'll see my three garter stitches forming those nice ridges here on this side. And right now, the first ridge starts down here with my main color in the bumps. And then you can see the second ridge having formed. And then it's hard to see right now because we've just got two rows, but you'll have that knit one, slip one pattern all the way across. We're gonna continue that. Typically patterns will suggest that you knit the number of rows equal to the number of stitches you have on your needle. So if I have 36 stitches, which is half of my 72, I'm going to knit 36 rows in my heel flap. That's 36 right and wrong, just total. Make sure you end wherever you started and then we'll be ready for the heel turn. If you're working a 64 stitch sock, again, I'll, I'll do the math for you. You would be working on 32 stitches, one half of your stitches, so then you would knit 32 rows in your heel flap. So I'm going to finish my heel flap and then I'll back, be back with you in a few minutes and show you how to turn the heel of your sock. All right, I have finished the 36 rows of my heel flap. You can see now I've got my three stitch garter panel on both sides of the heel flap and then I've got my knit one, slip one stitch pattern all the way across. Because I've knit 36 rows, I have 18 garter ridges, which is the number of stitches I would be picking up and then adding one for the corner when I close. So I'm gonna show you now how to knit the heel turn. My working yarn is in place. Because I started my heel flap on the wrong side row, I'm also gonna be starting my heel turn on the wrong side row. Again, the technique works, so follow whatever pattern you're using, but you'll see me uh, using the techniques that I use here. They're pretty transferable to any heel turn pattern that you may have. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, in the heel turn, I guess I should explain that first. In the heel turn, we are going to be knitting short rows back and forth to create an arched piece of fabric that creates the curved shape that you'll see here at the bottom of the sock. So the curved shape that we're gonna be knitting is this little triangle, and that curve is going to help us go from the downward direction we've been knitting. It's going to turn the stitches. So if you can see here, I'll pick that up for a second. If you can see here, we've been knitting this direction downwards, and then you'll see the stitches turn this direction. And this is the piece of fabric we're gonna be creating right here. And we're gonna do that with short rows. So let's jump right in. In my pattern, the first step is to knit or purl, depending on which side you're on. And I'm on the wrong side, so I'm going to purl 21 stitches across. The first row is a little bit of a setup row, actually the first two rows. And then from there, you're able to easily follow along even without a pattern because you're gonna be watching the stitches along the way. I should be counting two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. You know that I can count now at least to 21. I'm actually gonna count them one more time. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21. It's important to get the stitch count correct for your pattern on your heel turn or you won't have the right number of stitches and you won't be able to work them all. 
So step one is purl 21, then I'm going to purl two together and purl one. So purl 21, purl two together, purl one, and then turn the work. This is where we're gonna be working short rows. If this is a new technique to you, don't worry about it. All a short row is, is knitting back and forth or purling, going back and forth without completing the entire row, and that's gonna allow us to turn the fabric. So I've turned the fabric to the right side. The first thing I'm going to do with the yarn in back is slip one stitch. Now I'm going to knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In a mirror of what I just did, I purled two together and then purled one. Now I'm going to do a slip slip knit and knit one. And I've created the setup for my heel turn. So on this side, I had this little gap where I had my purl two together and then purl one and slip. I'm gonna create that same gap. Don't worry, they're gonna close up. Now I'm going to turn. So what my pattern would tell me to do at this point, I'm going to slip the first stitch purlwise with the yarn in front. Now I'm going to purl until I get to that gap that I've created. And actually I'm gonna to go to one stitch before the gap and you'll see that. So you can see right here, there's a space in my knitting between these two stitches. They look a little bit farther apart. I'm gonna to knit to one stitch before that gap or purl in this case. And now I'm going to purl two together over that gap and I'm gonna close that space. So purl two together, I'll purl one just like I did before and then turn my work. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. I'm gonna slip one purlwise with my yarn in back because it's a knit and then I'm gonna knit until one stitch before I see that space where I decreased before. And I'm here now. You can see that space again. It's pretty obvious. There's my decrease. I'm going to slip slip knit using the one stitch before and the one stitch after that space. Slip slip knit, knit one. So what you can see now is a little piece of fabric that's formed right here in the middle. It's a teeny tiny little heel turn already. And we're gonna be working back and forth, working one stitch farther each time we go until we've worked all the stitches on our heel turn. So I will turn my work. I'm gonna repeat exactly what I just did. So slip one purlwise with my yarn in front because it's a purl. Now I'm going to purl to one stitch before that gap. I'll stop here just so you can see what it looks like. It's pretty obvious where it is. You've got a stitch that's been slipped, so you can see that bar looks a little bit different. It's obvious where that hole is. It's a nice big gap, so you can trust yourself when you find it. All right, I've got the stitch before and the stitch after. I'm gonna purl those two together and then purl one. So I've worked one stitch farther. And we're going to continue doing this until we've worked all stitches on our heel flap. I just slipped one. I'm gonna knit until I get to that gap. So what you'll see once you've done your first two rows you don't even have to count at this point. You're just gonna be working one stitch farther each time. I'm here at the gap. I'm going to slip, slip, knit, and knit one. So the heel turn really intimidated me when I started knitting socks. I'll say today, I'm not intimidated by the heel turn, but I definitely try and sit down and do it all in one step or one sitting so that I don't forget where I was, 
short rows can be a little bit tricky sometimes because you're not working all the way across a row. And if you're not paying attention, it can be easy to forget where you are. I'm at my gap, I'm gonna purl two together. Purl one and turn. So that's the one, the one tip that I'll mention here is I do try and knit the whole heel turn all in one sitting. You'll see here, I'm doing it pretty much real time. It will take you a little bit longer if you've never done one before, but it's maybe 10 or 15 minutes worth of work at the most. I'm here at the gap again. Slip, slip, knit, and knit one. What you'll notice, I'll pause here for just a second. So if you were concerned about those gaps before, you'll notice when I do the decrease, I don't have any holes in my heel. It creates a nice tight fabric. You can see the decreases. So no need to worry about those little gaps creating holes. It's a nice finish. I'm gonna slip one pearlwise with the yarn in front and keep repeating those same two patterns going one stitch further each time until I've worked all the stitches on my heel turn. So we'll have just a few more rows to go and we'll be done. I know some people like German short rows for this. I do like knitting German short rows. I've never come across a pattern that has this short row technique written with a German short row. If I did, I'd be very happy to try that. So if you do have a suggestion for a pattern, let me know. This is another thing that as you become comfortable knitting socks, you'll find little things like heel turns or heel flaps or stitch counts, different techniques that really fit your foot well or the foot of the person you're knitting the sock for. Some heel turns are wider than others, some are narrower than others. And so the stitch counts that I'm using to start, that 21 and seven, is one that I really like for the fit of my foot on a 72 stitch sock. You may have a different stitch count. So you'll, you'll follow whatever pattern you're using for those two setup rows. And I think generally speaking, the point is to work all of the stitches in the heel flap as part of your heel turn. So we're getting closer. All right, so purl two together, purl one, and you'll see I only have two more stitches on this end. If I'm doing everything correctly, when I get to the other end, I should also only have two more stitches. If you do mess this up and you end up with, say, two more stitches on one side than the other, I would go back and re-knit the heel turn because if you're uneven, your heel turn is not gonna be in the center of your sock. It will be off to one side. Okay, slip, slip, knit, knit one, and I've got two stitches, so I am on track at this point, that is good. I've definitely miscounted before by one or two stitches. What actually tends to happen to me more than anything is I'm not paying attention and I've knit the leg of my sock and I might have, let's say 38 stitches on one needle and 34 on another and I don't realize it. Or I might even have just one extra stitch and I haven't caught it in my heel flap. I usually catch it in the heel flap if my stitch count is off but sometimes not until the end because I don't always do a good job counting. Okay, so now I'm going to purl two together and purl one, and the purl one was my last stitch. So I'm now done on this side, which means this should be my last go across. I've got two stitches left and I'm gonna be decreasing here and then I'll knit the last one. So this is our last row. I'm going to slip. We'll knit all the way to the end. And our last 
three stitches will be our slip slip knit, our knit one, and then we'll be done turning the heel of our sock. So I'm at my last three. I'm gonna close that gap by decreasing over the top of it. Slip, slip, knit. Knit one. And I've now worked across all stitches. So when you get to the end, you'll get to the end on your right side and your wrong side. You can see that I've created now this piece of fabric. So what it's done is created this shape, which will be the bottom of the sock. And you can see already here, it's taken my heel flap and it's turned that and created a little pocket where the bottom of my foot will sit. And my stitches are now going the direction that I'm wanting to knit. If you're using a contrasting yarn, like I am today, I like to break my yarn at this point. I break it and then I pick up my working yarn from my main color down here where I left it. That's how I do it. Some people commented in my video where I showed how to pick up the stitches that they'll take this contrasting yarn and go all the way down. And that's where they break the yarn. That's perfectly acceptable too. If you're using your main color throughout and you haven't changed colors, you will not have this tail down here. Your working yarn would be here anyway. And so you're just gonna keep going and pick up your stitches, work across your instep, pick up the other stitches, and you're good to go. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you would like to see other videos, leave me a comment below. If you have suggestions for patterns you'd like me to check out, I'd love to see those suggestions as well. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Happy sock knitting, everyone.